What you're about to experience are my opinions and truths. I'm suggesting their possibilities for you to consider, in which you can then come up with your own logical conclusions. Welcome out, all of you great decoders around the world, wherever you may be, male or female. My name is Logan, and this is Decode Your Reality, and today we're going to be breaking down and decoding the dragon. This will be Enter the Dragon, and the intro, the video was kind of the rendition of what I feel it's like to enter the dragon. You're going down into the belly of the beast that's dark. You have a flashlight you can't see, <clears throat> and you enter the dragon. What does this mean to enter the dragon? Well, let's jump right into this and find out, shall we? This one will be a gem once again, I feel. So put on a pair of headphones, get strapped in. This one's gonna be a lot of fun. It's not gonna be a long one. Just put this together really quickly. But again, as fate would have it, here we are. So let's get into the topics of this presentation. In the zero position, we have the intro, which is what I just described, you know, going down. What does it mean to enter the dragon, going into the darkness, from the darkness, trying to go into the light, maybe with your flashlight? That's what I tried to get across with that little short intro. Number one, we are going to go through what it means to enter. What are we entering into? We're going to get into that. Number two, the actual decode itself, enter the dragon. What does that mean? Number three, Robert. Number four, going to get into some Metallica. Enter Sandman. Is Sandman and the dragon the same thing? Number five, 22. And always love to hear your observations in the final position. Number six, what did you see? Keep your comments coming. And I'd love to hear your observations. So let's jump into this. Let's get into the first topic, enter. And I had used this graphic already in my latest decode called Illumination. So there's a few slides in here that are going to be utilized again. This is one of them. And, you know, this is how I feel we get into this world through the layers of the tarot and numerology. Obviously, the word enter is that big, fancy number 21 which can go to so many different ways. I mean, Saturn equals 21, Zeus equals 21. And wait till I show you at the very end what those are linked to. <clears throat> but it's the world card in the tarot. And I feel like the zero point right here in the card is indeed coming down into our world, the upside down world and becoming an avatar, a human being. And you have the four fixed signs. And I've already gone over that through the illumination. But we you know I had also mentioned this is this was a big find for me that the number 21 in the string of pi, we get into pure mathematics now. 
I hope by now most of you are, have been here and you know how I roll with the mathematics. If you're new, just try to follow along. It's just combining multiple layers, including mathematics with the mystical art platforms, including numerology, alchemy, and seeing how they all blend together and they tell us a story of how this code is expressing itself. So this number 21 found from the word enter and we enter the world. We enter the world of physicality. And through the string of pi, the number 21 occupies two digits, 93 and 94. And if you add up 93 and 94, you're going to get the number 187, which is the element osmium, which we now get a connection called the wizard of osmium. It's, it's, that's what runs over us, the wizard of osmium when it comes to the alchemical elements. And you know, what's very fitting is this right here because the 12 zodiac signs, you're gonna be one of those and you're gonna be all of those because you're gonna have a zodiac wheel tied to your birthday. Well, there are 13 layers to this, not just the 12, which are linked to the 12 apostles, but in the very dead center of that astrological wheel is the very powerful number 13. And that's where I had gotten the illumination from. And this is going to lead to iron in our blood, but it's also going to lead to, you know, the owl, the 13 and, you know, Lucy equals 13. So there are so many combinations and, you know, this is what rules over us as we enter into the dragon. The dragon, of course, is the sine wave and it's all about magnetism and electricity. I'm going to get into that. But here was the big takeaway is, you see, when you take all of these 13 elements and you add them up, going over to the trusty calculator, look at what number that we get. We get a match to the atomic mass of osmium 187 right there. So you can see the very big synchronicity of what it's like to enter the dragon. And when you do that, you get ruled over by the wizard of osmium, element number 76. And of course, 76 reduces down to the 13, and that's going to give you the Al once again and the Lucy. Lucy's 13 in Chaldean. But how about that right there? And those of you that like to do like what I like to do and add up both of these sides right here. If you take 187 and you add the 226, you're going to get the number 413, which is a mirror of pi. That's right. Pi 3.14. Well, 187 plus 226. Get out your calculators and fact check it. It's going to give you 413, the mirror of pi. How about that? So we enter the dragon. We come through the stars or from the stars and we're ruled over by the wizard of osmium in so many different ways. And then we enter the dragon and the dragon is the sine wave, making up the sine and cosine waves. And that is what we are. We are, this is the devil, the dragon, and it's tied to the sun. In the Chinese, the sun is tied to the dragon, the most reverent animal in the Chinese culture, the mighty dragon. It's going to be tied to Leo the lion, but let's get into this. So I want to talk about this movie really quick. This movie coming out in 1973, very successful movie starring the famous man called Bruce Lee. And you know, when you look at this movie, there are so many sinks. I could have just decoded this movie like gangbusters. I mean, he, his death was on the 20th of July. Wait till I show you what card is linked up to the release date of Enter the Dragon. I mean, it was released on the 19th of August. The 19th card in the tarot is the sun card. So Enter the Dragon tied to the sun. And there are so many sinks just with this movie right here. And so let's get into some of those. So the release date, as I mentioned, was on the 19th of August. 1973 and the running time of this movie was 102 minutes so when we enter the dragon the clue for this we go to alchemy we get the bridge here it is it's pandora's box so the dragon is linked to the shit storm that we enter into called life life's beautiful but it has a lot of chaos going on inside of it and that's where you're going to get the greek mythology story of pandora's box and if you saw my bloodline decoded i was talking about the rh factors in the blood and perhaps tying into the uh the the eight blood types that we 
generally have on the world stage. But you can see, like, were they, the people that created this movie, were they sitting down and they edited it exactly at 102 minutes because they knew that rhodium was tied to Pandora's box and it is the 102 and it's the mirror of the 201. Those of you that know what the 201 means, it's going to be tied to Mercury. Wait till I show you how it's tied to the dragon and astrology at the very end. Because again, we go back up here and this is what rules over us, folks. As you enter the dragon, it is astrology. It's the stars. It's the sun, the moon. It's the cosmos, the plant, the luminary bodies. That's what rules over us. As I've been showing, as many of you great decoders have been showing. So right off the bat, we have this Pandora's box tied to the dragon that we enter. I mean, the subtleties, 1973 is when it came out and we're entering the dragon. And when you look at the, uh, the blood pH, it's 7.3 to 7.4. I showed this in my bloodline, 7.3. 1973. I mean, it's a subtlety, yes, but clearly you can see the connection when you're kind of looking at all these layers and seeing the how, you know, Pandora's box and it's not stretching anything because you can see the code staring us in the face. And I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I stand, I shouldn't even say I'm sorry. I stand by my statement of mankind is being used and this is no exception. So what about the release date itself? August 19th, it's the seven of clubs card, the 20th card in the deck. And remember, Bruce Lee died on the 20th at age 32. 32's linked to duality because 32 is when water transmutes into a freezing state from a liquid at 33. These are all layers of the code, the source code playing out and man's not running this. And the 20 is tied to this big word right here called duality. So what is duality tied to? The dragon, of course. That's what we enter into as we come into this reality. We enter duality. And I mean, even the 20th card is the seven and seven is tied to the seven chakras that are in the body, the energy centers of the body, seven colors of the rainbow. You're entering into the dragon. You're entering into duality. So when we do the title of the movie and we do the numerology of Enter the Dragon, we get some comedy here. Again, I mean, I don't even really know what to say at this point. I just laugh at the code because I can see the source code and I see how man could never do this. It's just so complex. And I'm going to, this is just one prime example. Enter the Dragon being the 57, which is tied to Lucifer, by the way, the light bringer. The dragon's tied to the sun, the source of light. But the 57 is tied to this number right here, 269. It's the 57th prime number. And then I fact check that into the periodic table, the elements, the Elohim. And it's this element right here, Hassium. And this is the icon the Royal Society of Chemistry uses for this element. And this is the coat of arms for the city at which this element was discovered. And it was the city of Hess or Hesse in Germany. And there's the dragon. And not only just a dragon, but the red behind it. And this is the coat of arms for this city of which this element was discovered. So um, ladies and gentlemen, do you think that they knew this and naming this the movie because they knew these links were established? Come on, ladies and gentlemen, we got to start using some common sense and logic here. And when you do, you realize that this is the source code playing out in front of all of us and we are not controlling it. It is controlling all of us. To what degree, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know. But this obviously is not controlled by man, these outcomes. No possible way. No possible way. So let's get into some math on entering the dragon now. The dragon is the big takeaway, the number 22. And when we bring that into the string of pi again, using pure mathematics, and the number 22 occupies two digits, 135 and 136. It's going to give you 271. That's a prime number as well, but it's linked to this element right here called barium, the 56th element. It has atomic mass 136 as well. This is isotope 136. And the 56 found from the, the protons of barium is tied to this right here. And what is Enter the Dragon? It's a movie, lights, camera, action. So what is this telling us? When you enter into physicality, you enter into the movie and it's Pandora's box. It's a shit show. It's a shit storm. 
And it's got a lot of beauty to it, but it's got a lot of chaos in it. It's chaos and order down here. And that's clearly what this is telling us. Remember, this is 271. That's a prime number. 127 is the 31st prime number. It just keeps going on and on, this code. It's just the source code playing out. Now, I had already decoded Bruce Lee. If you're interested in watching the star of the movie, please do check out Bruce Lee Decoded. I released this back in 2021. And I'm going to show you, I, if you're interested, I'll show you how this guy's life was not his own. No siri Bob. He was completely owned by the source code. Living out, obviously, a life that he wanted to live out, if you asked him, like he was really good at martial arts, probably the greatest martial artist of all time, but it was in his code to do that. So he was led that way. But anyway, if you want to check the Bruce Lee Decoded out, please do so. Let's get into the second topic now, call, or the third topic, Robert. Why Robert? Well, Robert was the director. So I, I don't want to leave him out. One of the most successful martial artist movies of all time, Enter the Dragon. Here's the guy who directed it, Robert Klaus. And here's the comedy for this guy's life. Robert Klaus is a 49, down in a hole is a 49. What do we do when we enter the dragon? We go down the hole to enter into physicality. Right here, you can see it. You can see the code. I got more to show you on Robert Klaus, but the big takeaway, you know, obviously is the hole. The what, is, what does the hole mean? It means going down into duality. And remember, remember the Enter the Dragon released on 19th of August. That is the Seven of Clubs, which is the 20th card. If I just go right back up and here it is. This is when the movie was released on a day that is the 20th card in the deck. Tied to duality. So you can see what the whole narrative of this source code is telling you. You enter duality. That's exactly what that means. And this guy right here is tied to down in a hole. How about that? The director of the movie, Enter the Dragon. He's got a name that's tied to down in a hole. <laughs> and when you get, enter into duality, ladies and gentlemen, another word for the dragon, you end up having a birthday. You notice that I'm just keeping it in the Chaldean as well to, to present this narration for you. See, when you add in other numerology layers, and I'm not saying oh, they don't have any merit, but you, it's easy to start you know, getting things more correct when you add on more layers and ciphers. Try using just one, and your narrative becomes really, really, really ironclad. But nonetheless, this 20 is tied to duality, and we all have a birthday, solar return, whatever you want to call it. And when you have a birthday and you come into this world and you come down into the hole, you enter the dragon, you end up becoming a skeleton. And 99% of the total body found in the calcium, I mean, found, uh, the total amount of calcium found in the body is in the teeth and the bones. So you put two and two together, you can see what this 20 and duality means when it's tied to us as human beings having a birthday, just with these layers right here. So let's keep going. Let's go back to his name, Robert Klaus, the number 49. And here's the comedy for me personally, because his name Robert is a match to the word dragon. So again, you know, the guy directed it, but did he, he, did he write the movie? When you go and read about the movie, It was written by Michael Allen. There's the Al. But I mean, was Robert best friends with Michael? I mean, Michael equals 22 as well. You go to the numerology cipher right here, and Michael's 22. Same as the dragon, which is the same as Robert. You see how all these things mesh up? This is not by accident, by the way. But the director of the movie's got a direct match to the writer of the movie and to the title of the movie just using the same cipher called Chaldean, the oldest known numerology cipher on the planet. And then we bring in another separate layer to show you the source code. We bring in the 52 cards of the medicine deck. These cards are the Native American traditions of the 52 cards matching the 52 weeks. Instead of using symbols and like the tarot, these Cards were developed by uh, a, a, a few Native Americans, Jamie Sams and company in 1988, and they use animals, insects, reptiles, etc., to show you what the numbers mean. 
And the Dragonfly is the 27th card in the deck matching this guy's last name. I mean, are you freaking kidding me? Do you see the comedy? 1988, these came out. 1973, this came out. So were the, the people that developed these cards, were they fans of Enter the Dragon and Robert Klaus? And they knew that his last name is 27 in numerology, so they just had to name this the Dragonfly card? Well, I'll leave that up to you folks, but I mean, using common sense and logic, I highly doubt that it's, that's even a possible equation. This is the source code using mankind to create what it needs to create. And this is no exception. This is just absolute to me right here. Let's keep going. So if we bring in English now, my other, the sidekick of Chaldean, the word dragon is 59, which is a tie to the game of life. I have a decode on the game of life. That's a 59. And it's also a match to this right here called Never Never Land. What's Never Never Land? Well, we get into the next topic now. Metallica. Enter Sandman. We're off to Never Never Land. You should know this song. This is a big song. We're off to Never Never. I'm not even going to try to sing it because I'm not a singer, but only in the shower when no one's around but anyway <laughs> enter sandman we're off to never never land never never land is a 59 in the same cipher matching the game of life matching the dragon enter the dragon enter never never land and it's metallica and what's interesting is the reason why i have this man right here this guy <laughs> the, the comedy in this this guy he is R.G. Armstrong. He was the old man. Right here it says, a child having nightmares and images of an old man. He was the old man in the video. He was the Sandman. And guess what his first name is? Robert. How about that? So you got a Robert here, and then you go to Enter the Dragon, and you got the guy who directed it, Robert. Robert's 22. Dragon is 22. That are written by Michael Michaels 22. <laughs> I mean, was Meta did Metallica hire this guy because they knew that Enter the Dragon was the same as Enter Sandman? It meant the same thing? I mean, it was all about entering the nightmare. That's what the whole song was about. This Enter Sandman. It was all about a nightmare. I mean, when you go and you type in nightmare right here, folks, you're going to get the number 30, which is a direct match to the word... Demiurge, which is also a direct match to the new age name of the Yodhe Vahe. How about that? And then you also have the word Alice in the English. But anyway, let's get into this topic. Enter Sandman. So what is it? Is it the same thing? Enter the dragon, enter Sandman? Absolutely the same thing. Enter Sandman is the illustrious master number 44. And in the tarot, using the fool as card 0 and 22. I want to be very transparent. So this spread, this spread right here is the very popular fool at 0 and the 22. And you can take it out and it'll, it'll move the cards up and down. These numbers encroach anyway. But when you do that, you're going to get the outcome that I'm showing you right here. The 8 of Cups. And what does this card mean? It's the spiritual quest. You're leaving. It's the, this individual's got their back turned. This card means going on a spiritual quest, leaving behind one thing to go to the next thing. This is complete change. This is entering the Sandman. That's what this card means right here. Very fitting. Very fitting to match this outcome right here. The Sandman. And we enter into a skeleton as you walk away from your spirit self. And you're like, hey, I want to go down and play the game. And you have to enter into an avatar. So what about the, the, the pure mathematics with this number 44? So I know a lot of you come up with this 44. What does the 44 mean? Well, it's tied to the element ruthenium and the 101 in the portal, tied to the number 26 through the primes. But in the string of the golden ratio, get into the Fibonacci sequence, pure mathematics now, the golden spiral, 44 occupies the digits 58 and 59, which is going to lead you to these two big names or titles and uh, words that I've been showcasing for hundreds of videos now. It's the puppet master playing out the game of life. Enter Sandman. That's what happens. 
And then you become a puppet on strings. I know a lot of you won't tolerate, as I keep saying, you're not going to tolerate that. I got people unsubscribing. That's cool. They won't tolerate. They don't think they're being used. Well, I don't know how you would wrap your mind around this and describe it in any way that I'm showing you, but what about the string of pi? Because that's what we, we make up pi through the sine and cosine waves. If you, if you checked out my illumination decoded, I gave a great example, a great illustration of how pi works, and you can measure any number with that. <clears throat> but when you do it in the string of the, the, the digits of pi, look at, look at what we have. We have just one digit off, 59 and 60. So we have the game of life, and as I've been showing over and over, when you enter into the game of life, you end up feeding the wolf. And it's Wolfram and Tungsten, which is tied to the sun. So you can see in the string of pi, 59 and 60. In the string of the golden ratio, 58 and 59. So it literally encompasses digits 58, 59, and 60, which is going to give you a total of, this is a way to do some advanced decoding, 177. 177 is going to link to the 72nd element called hafnium, and 72 plus 72 is 144. You're going to get your angels and demons in there as you enter into Sandman. That's what this whole narration tells us right here, keeping it in the Chaldean family. So when we single out this Sandman, the dragon, we enter into the sands of time. That's what the Sandman is. We enter into the hourglass. You've seen one of these before, egg timers or sand timer, but it's in the form of, a, of a, the shape of a letter eight. I mean, hourglass equals 33 in Chaldean numerology, but we become sand. We move through time. You only get so much time. So that 23 is linked to these two big words on the world stage. Done two decodes on both these topics, bloodline and pineal gland decoded. They're both 23. How about that? So when you enter into the dragon, when you enter into the Sandman, the nightmare called the game of life, as beautiful as it is, you enter into an avatar, you have blood start pumping through you, and your pineal gland is activated, which I feel is part of the implant in your brain part of the all-seeing eye that uses you to experience this game called life. Get it? That's why we're all the architect down here. Right there, this is, to me, this is proof right here with this 23. So the 23rd card in the tarot, using the fool as card zero and 22 again, it's this ace of wands. The aces are all the beginning points, and this is representing the mind. As you enter into Sandman, you enter into the mind of the cosmos, controlling you through the all-seeing eye. And this converts right here, the 23rd card, found from Sandman, it converts into these cards called the Cards of Illumination. These came before the tarot. And this is the 14th card in the deck. And that links right into this word on the world stage called time. So you can see the narration is when you enter the dragon, when you enter Sandman, you enter the nightmare, you now enter time. And you got to play out the game until you die. I mean, the word God equals 14, the word Satan equals 14. That's what, that's what time is. It's the devil. It's me and you. You only have so much time. And then through time, you end up sinning, making, you know, what we call mistakes. 14 is going to add up to the number five. Five is man. Five is the pentagram. Five is five fingers, five toes. Sandman. I mean, this is five. This is also tied to the royal star of the lion as well, which is tied to Yaldabaoth, which is tied to the Yod, which is tied to Lucifer and Jesus. They're all the same. They're just different constructs that people make up. So what about this right here? Because we're talking about the sands of time, the Sandman. Well, how about this soap opera? called Days of Our Lives. Days of Our Lives. And when you go to Days of Our Lives, what are the most successful television shows ever? As a matter of fact, it's one of the longest running scripted television programs in the entire world. Been around since 1965. 65 is gonna link to the Demiurge in the 30, tied to the element zinc. And this is all scripted. I mean, this is a scripted television program. We're living in a scripted reality. I mean, you can, you can keep, I mean, look at this, Alice Orton. I mean, some of these things are so ridiculous. The series is in Illinois in the fictional city of Salem. So, you know, just, I like going to look at this stuff. Salem is 16. 
which is tied to the word hell. That's what this whole thing is. We're, we're in hell. And when you're in hell, you're made up of this, the Adam, the Adam and Eve, 16, one through six days at sulfur as well. So you're going to get sulfur, which is 28, which is going to be tied to Lucifer, which is going to be tied to an architect right there. 28 it says all using the Chaldean don't even need to deviate away from that. All found from days of our lives. Lucifer's alchemology is 57, by the way. It's the guiding light. Lucifer's the guiding light. The radiation from the sun. But this 57 is really big because it's tied to this right here, which is about another movie. <laughs> so the longest running soap opera <laughs> is tied to the Truman Show <laughs> and the 57. How about that? So you're on television. That's right. We're all on television. Please check out my Illumination Decoded or my Truman Show Part 2. My first one, thank you everybody for the support on that. It's 16, 17,000 views. I want to get everybody to watch part number two. More in-depth information. But there you can see, this is the comedy using the same cipher, 57. 57 is going to be to the 12. 12 is going to give you to the three. Three is tied to lithium and the brain. If you study lithium, what they give lithium to patients for, for the brain, the all-seeing eye and the brain. But this is just pure comedy right here. We're in a soap opera. As above, so below. We live in fractals. And Truman fi finally figured that out. When you, are, are you going to figure that out? Are you going to finally realize what is going on in this reality? It's a scripted reality that we live in. Mankind's not in control of it. We're just along for the ride. You just got to let go and have fun. And how about this? So when we enter the dragon and we enter into the soap opera, we enter into the Truman Show. I mean, come on, what are the odds, folks? Enter the Dragon's 57, the Truman Show's 57, the longest running soap opera on television, Days of Our Lives is 57. It's all telling you we're inside of a movie, a soap opera, which is the dragon, as we enter into the box, Pandora's box. It's all telling us the same story over and over. We just, a lot of us haven't been paying attention. But it's just, you know, is man telling you that man maybe can't become conscious of it? Like, if you're now realizing what's going on, you become conscious of it. But I promise you, you can start looking at your life. It's all scripted if you start to pay attention to it. And then you just can just let go and have fun and enjoy the ride. Figure out who the heck you are and why you're here. So let's get into the number 22, shall we? Because this is, this is where it all leads to the dragon. I showed Michael and dragon all being 22. Well, how about this? How about this? Bam! Truman is 22. Dragon is enter the Truman show. That's what this is telling all of us. No brainer here. Dragon and Truman, both 22. Michael fought, fought the dragon. Michael's 22. You see how it's all part of the script? So this 22 is very big. And it's going to be tied to this element right here. And now we get into the fallen angel story. Because you see, it's the Titans who got kicked out of heaven by the Olympians. And got casted down to Tartari or Tartarus, however you want to pronounce it. And we're all part of that whole story. I don't think it's exactly like that, but we're all part of that. And the Titans are the sons. Like when you go and read about through Royal Society of Chemistry, providing a lot of these clues, here's titanium. And here is the um, squatter man right here called the squatter man. But it says right here, the name is derived from the Titans, the sons of the earth goddess, giving birth to man, the earth, Gaia. Right? So are we fallen angels or are we just offspring of the earth? Well, I mean, it's just going to come down to an opinion. But this right here, I mean, this is the most, this is the most abundant uh, atomic mass for titanium. Most of you should know what that 47 is. It's tied to the tetragrammaton, which is the yod heh vah -Heh, which is Yaldabaoth. It's all the same. Yaldabaoth's got the lion head and the worm body tied to the serpent and the dragon. It's, it's just all the same, folks. It's just packaged a little differently. But this is called Isotope 48. 48 is tied to the wild boar. If you've been paying attention, I decoded that and some other stuff. In case you're just wondering, this is Isotope 48. It's a very, very, this is tied to the 87 and 88 in the string of pi. 88 is linked to time travel in the Taurus fields and the element radium and Ra. What all that's linked to. 
So to finish this presentation up, I decided I wanted to bring in some astrology, okay, from, from this dragon right here, because I want to know like, okay, the great dragon was hurled down. It says it in theology, enter the dragon, you're entering into the movie. How do we get here? Well, I figured I'd end this by bringing in some astrology. So I, those of you that are new to astrology, just try to follow along. But those of you that are fans of astrology, I'm going to show you some things you've probably never seen before. Maybe you have, maybe you've seen this before, but I'm going to show you how the, the numerology of Chaldean and uh, alchemy with this element titanium, the Titans entering the dragon, the fallen angel story, the 100, the 200 is tied to astrology. And it has its say in how this reality works. So when you take the chart of astrology, now you're going to have two. You're going to have the as above chart right here, where it has Aries in this position. Instead of Taurus going down, it's going to go up. And then it's going to end over here with Libra. And it puts Cancer at the top. And then if you go to the so below chart, which is the typical chart we read for birthdays and as an astrology reader, you have the typical Aries and then Taurus going down and going counterclockwise. So this one goes clockwise, the as above, and the so below goes counterclockwise. And they form a spiral, like a tornado. And they both can be red. And this is massively important now, ladies and gentlemen. Please pay attention to this. This is going to go out with a bang right now with this presentation. So I decided to look and see where 22 degrees is. So I took a compass. I took a compass and I put it inside the, the Zodiac wheel right here, 360 degree wheel. That's why the, you know, these signs are 30 degrees, 30 times 12, 360, you get 360 degree circle. But where's the number 22? Where's 22 degrees on this compass in the as above and the so below? Well, let's look at the as above. At 22 degrees, let me zoom in so you can see. I put a line through it. There's the 22 right around there. Look at what sign it's in. It's in the freaking sign of Leo. Leo's the lion and the lion's ruled by what? The sun. In Chinese, the Leo, the lion is the dragon. The Leo's the fifth sign. In Chinese, the fifth sign is the dragon. The great dragon got hurled down. There it is right there. I mean, dragon is 22, right there. Coming from the as above now, coming from Leo. Leo's gonna be the star of the lion, the heart of the lion. It's gonna tie to Regulus. And as this comes down, it's gonna make a mark all the way here at the bottom, all the way across in the sign of Aquarius. And you're gonna be right around the 161 degree, I'm sorry, the 200, 201 degree marker right there. As this comes around, all the way around here, as it follows the clockwise motion, this line comes through around the 200 to 201 marker. And that should tell you a lot about the 200, 201. I'm going to get to that in a minute. But Aquarius is the 11th zodiac sign. So one way that we can look at this is it's linked to this element called sodium. And what do we see in sodium? The 22. And what is the 22? It's the dragon. It's the Truman. The great dragon got hurled down. Right there with Aquarius, which is man. And, you know, I mean, I know classically it's Saturn that rules it, but I feel Uranus is a better uh, planet to observe your, uh, Aquarius because Aquarians, you know, myself being an Aquarian, don't like to be <laughs> living under rules or regulations. Very eccentric, very off the wall. And that's what Uranus is all about. And then I feel it's the eighth planet. But Saturn could fit in there as well. But I'm going to show you how Saturn fits into all this. So when we go now to the so below, the typical chart of what astrologers will read for your chart. If you've ever had your chart read, it's going to be the so below chart. Well, look at what it's lining through. The 22 degrees tied to the dragon. We now have the sign of Sagittarius, which has got the all-seeing eye on it. The great dragon was hurled down. And now we get Jupiter. So we have Leo and Jupiter, Sagittarius. Sagittarius is the ninth sign. Leo is the fifth. 95 is the am, the I am, if you've been paying attention. So there's a sync there for that. 
So I had covered this in my prison plan at Decoded, I believe it was, showing perhaps how we all got here. And it's through the nine and the three axis. So Sagittarius being that 22 degree marker in the so below chart goes all the way down and meshes with the sign of Gemini, the two twins. And Gemini is ruled by the planet Mercury. Mercury has a weight of 200, 200, 201. So those of you that follow the, the 201, well, now you know exactly what it's tied to. It's not only tied to Mercury, it's tied to Gemini, the two twins. And Gemini is tied to this symbol right here called the caduceus. It's the serpent, the two serpents going up. And it represents the medical and the dragon, the great dragon girl down. You got serpents here, very similar. And Mercury is very elusive because you can barely catch it in the sky as an astronomer. You have to wait at certain times during the sunrise or sunset because it's just so fast and close to the sun. And it's the communicator. But this is very, very important with these measurements just with this right here. But let's get into the other side because now we have to measure the left side and we go and it looks like this. So why I'm showing this now is because you see, if we go the, if we go the opposite way, we went here. Now we're going to go the opposite way. We're going to go counterclockwise. And we now get into a different layer, which this one really makes a lot of sense. It's in the sign of cancer. The great dragon was hurled down and it's tied to what's cancer ruled by the moon. And in my prison planet, I showed, I mean, Santo, the great Santo Spinacci, he feels that the moon's a portal and that's how we get in here. That's how we incarnate. It's either the sun or the moon, one or the other, or it could be both. It could be coming through both sides, but this is telling you we're coming in from the moon right there. 22 degrees going counterclockwise in the as above chart. It's cancer. And then what's below that, of course? Well, it's the great Saturn. It's, it's Kronos, the timekeeper. And it's the sea goat. And what's really fascinating about this is that when you mesh this up, this line running all the way across at 22 degrees, when you go counterclockwise, you're going to get to the number 161. If we go this way, I should say, if you go right to left, it's 201 and 161, which is the golden ratio. So if you go forwards or backwards, you're going to get the 200, 201 to the 160 and the 161, which is the golden ratio, which is going to be tied to the 322. And you know what number that means? It's tied to the golden ratio. It's tied to the sego and time. So it's telling you as you enter into the, the fallen angel story, enter the dragon, you enter into life, you enter in from the moon, that portal, you come down and then you're on the dance floor. And Capricorn, the, the sea goat, you're in the sea of space. That's why maritime law and all that stuff plays its role because of this right here. Well, when we go over to the, the so below chart, it's just flipped at the top at 22 degrees. It's Saturn. We come from Saturn time, father time, and it comes down and then we incarnate through cancer and the moon. So it really doesn't matter which way you go with this one, you're going to get both the same outcomes. And you know, remember, why is it the Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn? And then you got the equator in the middle. Why did, they, why did those get chosen? Maybe for this exact reason right here, because of what I'm showing you at these degree markers. So when you bring them in a little bit more, it starts to really tell the story. You know, Dragon is 22. We're marking and measuring the 22. And the moon is linked to titanium because titanium is Saturn's moon, Titan. So we have Saturn here with the, at the 22 degree marker going counterclockwise, measuring the so below chart. And it's on an axis with cancer, which is ruled by the moon in astrology. And is our moon just Titan? Is it just the Titans? Is this what it's telling us? The great dragon gets hurled down and it's, you know, frequency and waves and magnetism and electricity. 
But all these planetary bodies and luminary bodies and zodiac signs all tell their story. They all have a hand in all this. And there's that 22 right there tied to the dragon. And so, you know, when you bring them all in, I mean, here's all four of them. Is it, it's, is it both? Because, you know, like I, I, I believe that our reality from all the research I've been doing through astrology that Jupiter and Saturn are father, son, and they, ha they, they are the kind of the rulers of it all. And they have, they form a symbiotic relationship. I mean, up here in the ninth and 10th houses, this is called your midheaven in astrology, which is, which is going to tell you what your service to the world is. And then in the as above, you're going to get cancer and Leo four and five here. And you get the sun and moon because Leo's ruled by the sun and cancer's ruled by the moon. So either, no matter which way you slice it, this is the outcomes you're going to get here. This is the outcomes you're going to get. And are we just living through the moon and Mercury? I mean, is it a coincidence when you go do the numerology of Mercury, you're going to get 23. And then when you do moon, you're going to get 23. Is that a coincidence? Considering that they're both at the bottom right here, finishing up the 22 degree markers going counterclockwise and going clockwise, you get the ninth and 10th houses. And this is like spinning the wheel, wheel of fortune and the hermit. I mean, this, th there's, a, there's more to what I'm showing you here, folks. This is just a head start. Maybe you can tinker with it. Maybe you can figure out some things. But I know this is very big. And there's way more to it than what I'm showing you with all of this construct. So anyway, folks, I'd love to hear what you saw. I wanted to keep this one rather short to get some more material out to all of you. Uh, and, you know, again, as fate would have it, I just put this together really quickly. But it was really, you know, I, I want to give a big shout out to Jason and from Jason Bashir's from Archaics. And somebody, I don't remember who this person was, but somebody had told me on the 138 measuring that on the astrology wheel. And that's what got me into the idea of measuring these, na these words and to the astrology wheel and the markers on that. And folks, if you just take what I'm showing you here and you start to use it with your decoding, I bet you will find a whole host of new things that you can start to decode from. This right here to me has a massive amount of merit on telling us how we all got here. And I'm starting to tie, uh, to tie a lot of things together now based upon what I'm showing you here, based upon the rules of astrology, Saturn, Jupiter, the moon and Mercury. I mean, 23, both of them. It's very interesting how these things are all tied together. I mean, Zeus is 21, Saturn's 21. So it's very fitting how these things are all coming into play. And these are going to form, you know, four signs. It's going to create uh, and form a hourglass shape right here as well between these ninth and 10th houses and third and fourth houses. It's going to form that. So there's just so many ways that you, we can keep going. And I'd love to hear your observations. I thought that was really big. I thought it was very big material to go into. And I'm going to really have fun deep diving deeper down into that hole. So anyway, love to hear what you saw during this presentation. Uh, but that's all I got for today. My name is Logan for Decoders Reality. Till next time, ladies and gentlemen, we will see you later.